to make a saucy emblem in Black Magic Fusion. First, take your ground texture and make the center a bit brighter. Sort of like a flashlight that caught the mouse stealing cheese. I use a simple color correct note for that, but you could also use a solid color and add it on top. Choose whichever feels more exciting to you. To protect the cracks, I derive a mask from the ground's luminance, because you know, in crack world, only thick black cracks can impress the female cracks. Hold control to adjust the lows and highs. I wish I could adjust my girl's lows and highs like that. I then multiply the crack mask with the ellipse mask. Ha! Look at that! All cracks are black again. And all the females are going like... <laughs> Congratulations! You have completed the first step. Let's move to the next one. But before we do that, sip on your rum. <laughs> Create the shadows, I grab my emblem design, pop it in there, and then I could use the trail tool to create swell looking shadows. Problem with that, you will have to do jiggle wiggle action. It is quite effective when you want to release stress from your system. Simply jiggle wiggle for 30 minutes a day, and don't forget to consult your doctor first. A less freaky method is to use the Pirates of Confusion Soft Shadow Fuse. Mm. This tool is so shabby, it runs even on rum. To speed things up, I reduce the resolution, apply soft shadows, and later, guess what? What? I resize it back. Additionally, the soft shadow fuse allows you to create a gradient. After all, not too shabby. I then merge the shadow on top of the cracks. Poor cracks, they have tried so hard. Now overtaken by the shadow. Ha! But see from the bright side. We have completed the second step. Let's sip on the rum and move to the next one. We want to create the impression of light illuminating the ground. For that, we can use the shader tool. Uh, uh, what is that? The shader tool is usually used to relight your pre-rendered CG elements using a combination of world space normals, screen space normals, and world position pass. What, three of them? Once you have shifted the normals into the normal channel, you can go crazy. It is advised to use nodes economically. Echo what? As a wise old fella used to say, many paths lead to Rome. Some are longer, some shorter. Now in this case, I can achieve the very same result using a simple filter. Then girlfriend again. Now the same with the shader. I replace the emblem normals. And as you can see, instead of four notes, we burned only two notes. Yippee! Of course I keep the filter version. A mask derived from the filter's luminance is hooked into the BG tool. Set the type to gradient and radial to mimic a light fall off. Do yourself a favor and choose a Ferrari red. Interpolation Space Lab gives you an exponential fall off. Hey, someone unpiped my mask. It must have been the salty sea dog from the ports. Ah, I hate that guy. Continuing on, keep your flow clean, or in other words, keep it flowing. I add the light on top of our ground. This time the shadow loses. Everyone has got to lose once in a lifetime. That's how you learn, matey. I've rearranged the notes and hey, look at that. Shadows won again. See, lesson learned. Step completed and I've earned myself a bottle of rum. Let's move to the next step. Bang. Creating light rays is easy. Simply use a noise. Use the soft shadow output as a mask for that noise. Then, to that noise, add another soft shadow node. Add a directional blur and set it to zoom. Increase the length. I resize it back to the project resolution. Then I add it on top of everything. No, by the thunder! Shadow lost again. I add a brightness contrast, which I will use to remove the portions covered by the emblem. To avoid adding another mask to do an invert operation, I use the tool's own invert mask option. Can you believe it? Shadows won again. Create a filter, hook in the soft shadows, and set the filter to Sabelle. It's not the girl's name, it's an edge detection. Oh, what's that? I don't know yet. After the resize, I add another brightness contrast, and I hook in that dubious mask. Increase the gain until your horses go like... <coughs> Reduce the madness if necessary. Creating the emblem's surface is easy. Grab your emblem. Blur the ground. Bring those bad boys together. Cut out the blurred ground using a boolean tool. Use the emblem as a mask. Set it to clear. Again, saving nodes, use the apply mask inverted, but that's like free rum. 
Merge the surface on top of everything. Bye bye shadows. Sip on your rum while contemplating on how to create the next element. Reflections. Oh no, how to do that? Drop in a displace node. Go back and grab the emblem normals. Pop it right there. Hook it into the green slot. Then set the displace from radial to XY. Simsalabim reflections. Grab an emblem and drop in a mask. Use the mask for the displays to avoid displacing the already depressed shadow. Let's move to the next step. Bang! Creating rim lights is a piece of cake. One of my favorite tools for that is hidden in the bin. It's called edge control. Go find it. Treasure hunt! I hook the emblem mask into it. This will spit out an outline which you can control. But I won't. I use it as it is to mask a BG. Let me tell you a secret. When you work in 16-bit float, it is advised to crank up glowing colors really high. That way the glow effect will look saucy. Bah! To make the rim lights a bit irregular, I use the rays result as a mask. Bang! Bang bang! It is time to add the glow effect. For that we have two contenders. In the left corner, Mr. Sir Brian Ray's X-Glow. And in the Italian corner, Signore Emilio's Fast Expo Glow. Which one do you like? I adjust the glow. Get excited and slap it on top of everything. Look there, we have a winner. Because we use the same noise we used for the rays, not only can you create an animation by the sheer power of the noise, you can also emphasize on hotspots by using a mask and a brightness contrast. There you go. Guess what? It's time for another run. Let's move to the next step. This time I use a drone footage. It has such a bad quality, it's only worthy to be used as reflections. And if your viewer goes disco like this, you are on a sure path to awesomeness. I bring the footage over. Oh, oh no, I forgot the normals. Now I create the reflection element using a very unique method. A pirate method, if you will. Drop in a color space node and a BC. <laughs> Why not? In the color space, I change the conversion to color and the type to CMY. Oh, what's happening? A time slip. Oh, I, I must have had too much rum. I can't seem to remember how I did this. I have a detailed recipe on my pirate ship. I added some of the red light over the reflections using a so-called light wrap. This in particular makes it look very saucy. And if we take a look at our current situation, it seems we are heading straight to Booty Island. I then create yet another reflection element, this time using fire. You can use any of the previously showed methods. This time, however, I limit the fire to the cobra's tail. To add a bit more realism, I will create a wear effect using the, yes, very blur. I use a texture that has the scurvy and I do the low and high action again. I then apply it to the very blur's green slot, S-L-O-T. Well done! Let's move to the next step. Bang! Using the shader method, I add some more rim lights. Because for pirates, more is always better. Add an impressive amount of gold. Uh, I mean glow. They both shine, but only one blinds men. Look at the beauty here, shining all so happy. Let's move to the next step. Now using yet another shader to create a sort of reflection along the edge. Look at her! Look at her! Oh, so happy. Continuing on. Add some chromatic aberration to hide the mistakes we did. Add some focus effect using the almighty variabler to hide even more mistakes we did. Add some smoke, cause you know, Hollywood uses it, so it must be good. Lastly, apply some grading. My apologies, I've had too much rub. No, I won't be coming down unless you subscribe to me channel. Oh, come on! Press that bloody button already, will ya? <laughs>